and it's working with the Bee Gees. Right. Okay. Um, and another very inspired. This is a funny, a, a funny little uh, story. Um, so I've always loved the Bee Gees. You know, the, from the first record on, I loved all their stuff, from New York Mining Disaster to you know the Odessa stuff to. You know, the songs are just fa fantastic. Always a good recording. Um, Lonely Days, Lonely Nights. It was just like, what a great record that is. Um, I can go on and on, but I won't. Um, but I was always a big fan. So um, we get the, okay, we got booked. Uh, and Nick was booked as the engineer. But as a fan, I wanted to be, I wanted to hang out. I wanted to be there. So I was there to greet them. This is funny. So they were at Criteria started, starting the session. And they brought their band with them. Um, the first thing... The guitar player looks really ratty and he comes, I don't even remember his name, whoever he was, but um, this is funny. He came up to me, where can I get some Coke? Shaking, <laughs> wanted some Coke. I said, oh, in the fridge. I had, I, it didn't even click that he wanted cocaine. <laughs> I, I Seriously, because we always kept, there was a stash with beer and sodas and in the fridge at the studio. So the Coke, yes, okay. Uh, they're in the fridge. No, man, no, man, cocaine. <laughs> Be, real beatnik anyway that's not the story i just popped into my mind so i thought i would share that which is pretty pretty damn funny so they come in uh, uh the great albie gluten keyboard whiz a uh, smart musical genius and carl richardson is carl richardson is the engineer a criteria guy and uh, they start working you know and the first thing they put up is uh oh we tune the room nick always tuned the speakers and this is right before they came in and um, he says, Ed, go, he did something. He said, go downstairs and reconnect the speakers. The speakers had been disconnected when he was voicing it somehow. I don't remember how. I'm not that technical. And uh, he said, go hook the speakers back up to the amplifier and make sure they're in phase. Okay, no problem. So I thought they were in phase. And the first thing that Albie and Carl, they put up a tape to listen to the monitors. And then Carl looks at me and goes, those speakers are out of phase. And Nick looks at me like, <laughs> so I, there, there was a little, on the far end of the control room, there was a, a, a door that opened up and went downstairs with the amplifier to the amplifier room. So I immediately went down there and did a quick switch on the uh, polarity of one of the speakers. It, it was embarrassing. Um, but just to experience, you know, I, I started hanging out, you know, um, I be, befriended Barry. Um, we were both into UFOs and, uh, psychic phenomena stuff we traded a few books uh, he he was into this guy seth the seth papers he was um kind of a psychic kind of kid and i was into uh, ufo abductions i had the uh, betty and barney hill story it was called the interrupted journey which i was really into when i was younger about the, it's pretty much the first alien abduction book that brought it to worldwide attention um and so we, we hung out. He, he, he smoked a lot of weed. We'd, I'd clean weed for him and we'd roll joints and hang out. And, uh, but when it came time to do vocals, it was just remarkable. They were so good. And they sang all of the background vocals together, all their parts, but not different parts. They would do unison lines. They would do a low harmony. And then they would, they would do three tracks of that. Then come, and it was so tight. And they would come back and they'd double track it and then bounce that to another track. Then they'd do the second part, do the same thing. And now, that's something I do to this day if I have, you know, right. something that... And that was calls. a queen thing too, right? It was, absolutely. Yes, absolutely a queen thing. Yeah. So, I mean, between Roy and watching, you know, Carl and Albie working on the Bee Gees stuff and seeing how fucking talented these Bee Gees were with their vocals. I mean, and how tight they were. Those those tracks, you should be, you should be dancing. Wow. That's a great sounding record, man. <laughs> 